This is ridiculous. I think this is the busiest trail I have ever been on. There is definitely a lot of rock scrambling to get up here. If you're not comfortable climbing up rocks, don't come up here. I'm Blake. I'm Ellie. And, and on, on today's, today's adventure, adventure, we're at Shenandoah, Shenandoah National, National Park. Park. And we're here during peak fall foliage. But is it worth the crowds? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Welcome to Shenandoah National Park where we just entered the Front Royal entrance which is the northernmost part of the park and we're having 24 hours in this amazing park here in Virginia and we don't have a place to stay tonight. So I think that should be the thing that we do first. So hopefully we find a campground with availability inside this beautiful national park. Fingers crossed. got a home for tonight. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. We gotta find it though. There's a lot of them. There's 114 that are first come first serve. We gotta get one with a bear box because there are bears here. We are at Shenandoah in peak foliage, which means that every single campground, except this one, was completely full. We're at Matthew's Arm Campground and there was about 20 or 30 campgrounds that were yet to be taken. If you didn't book one like us, come to Matthew's Arm, drive around the loop, and hopefully you find one open. We normally set up our campground before we go explore because we know we're gonna come back super late. This is our tent behind me, all set up and ready to go. So we are heading into the park to find some awesome hikes. So something we're already noticing about Shenandoah National Park is that there are tons of viewpoints just like this one behind me. And they're absolutely beautiful. And you just drive this really long winding road at the top of the Shenandoah Valley. And that's like really the best way to explore this park other than making some hikes to overlooks. So behind us here is Kind of the tunnel view, well I guess it is called tunnel view. Yeah. It's so similar to Yosemite's tunnel view. You come out and there's these beautiful views here. Yeah, lots of people here as expected because it's really a good view. What do you think is better, this tunnel view or the one in Yosemite? Nothing beats the Yosemite <laughs> tunnel view. Yeah, I don't see a half dome out there <laughs> or El Capitan. <laughs> no, but it is a really cool spot. <laughs> So definitely something that we're learning is that not every overlook is made equal. And then also not every overlook is really worth stopping at because some of them are completely full of people and some of them are beautiful like this. <laughs> some spots are a little too crowded. And truthfully, since there are so many of these overlooks, it's really not worth your time to stop at the ones that have a lot of people because it's just not a good time. You drive maybe five minutes later and then you come to one just like this. You like this spot? Really nice. It's better than the last one. Yeah, and there was a lot more people at the other one. So we've gone quite a far away on the road already, even though we're probably not even halfway through the park. And we're stopping at a place called Skyland. Now there's a lot that you can get here. There's a gift store, there is a place that you can eat because we are very hungry for lunch, but it also gives you some absolutely amazing views of the surrounding area. This is one of the highest elevation parts of the entire park and an awesome place to stop for lunch or just a break while you're on this very long drive. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then how about breakfast? We've made it to our first hike, which is the Upper Hawksbill Trail. This is actually the highest point in Shenandoah, so unfortunately it is super busy. We got a 2.1 mile hike there and back. That's all. That's all I've got. <laughs> So since we are in one of the highest elevation parts of the park, it actually means that it has the least amount of fall foliage 
because it's a little bit past peak here. It's still really beautiful and colorful. You just see a little more leaves here on the ground. This is ridiculous. I think this is the busiest trail I have ever been on. I, I can't remember a time I've ever come to a summit. There have been this many people. So as we head back on this trail, the end is actually so beautiful. In the rock faces, you can get some really awesome pictures, even with all the people that are here. Now, would I say it was worth it? Uh, Ellie, I need you to fill that one in for me. I think that we're gonna have a lot better viewpoints than this, but it truthfully is not so bad if you just wanna come check it out. She thinks it's worth it. I almost left you there. Welcome to the Dark Hollow Falls Trailhead, where it's an absolute zoo right now. All of these cars are parked in the grass and they can't get out. However, this is one of the most popular trailheads in the entire park, so we're still excited to see what all the hype is about. We made it to the bottom, but so did everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> this trail has literally the two things that you need to make it a popular trail. It's short <laughs> and it's got a waterfall at the end. Those are literally the two things that make yep. the trail so famous. This waterfall is actually so beautiful. They're in fall foliage, but the leaves is kind of falling down. Even with all these people, it's it's just really, really nice. Yeah, you can see all the leaves that fell around the waterfall. I've never seen a waterfall in fall, honestly. <laughs> So we like to show you guys real and raw adventure here on this channel. And sometimes when you go to national parks, you just don't really feel like you get that experience. And we really think that's happened in the last three years or so since COVID, where the national park attendances have absolutely soared and not the infrastructure alongside with it. So you'll go on these amazing hikes that just aren't meant for the number of the people that are on the trail. So these national parks that were made to make everything accessible, the outdoors accessible to people, sometimes feels a little bit less like the outdoors now, which is a very strange thing to say. So we have still gone more and more south on this beautiful scenic drive, and we have one more awesome hike, and we're gonna do it in this golden light for sunset. We're currently on Bear Fence Mountain, and we're doing a quick, but not so easy hike. This hike is one mile loop trail and we're gonna be going up some rock scramble. It's gonna have a good amount of elevation. So we'll see how it is. It took us only about 20 minutes to get up here, or maybe less, <laughs> and it's just so beautiful with the golden light right now. This might be the best place for sunset here. There are a lot of people, just like everywhere we've been, but honestly, that's totally fine with a little bit of seclusion that we get right on this rock that we're standing on. There is definitely a lot of rock scrambling to get up here. If you're not comfortable climbing up rocks, don't come up here, but it's definitely worth it. <laughs> And you can see there's even more scramble for us to go after this. I think many people who were on this trail had no idea what they were getting into. Mm. <laughs> Shows if you're wearing Crocs, what do you think? <laughs> Crocs on this trail, I'd have to say it's a no. Oh my gosh, people are insane. I've been looking for one of these. Well, this is very worn out but it's a white blaze, which you only see in these parts on the Appalachian Trail. And actually the Appalachian Trail goes all the way through the entire national park. And it's thousands of miles. 
and it's one of a bucket list hikes that we want to do eventually. Fingers crossed. Good morning from Shenandoah National Park and today we're going on the Stony Man Trail which is behind us. This is the second highest point in the park so pretty cool hike. We've got a 1.6 mile lariat. What is a lariat? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like a, a loop within a straight and then a loop and then a straight. Something like that. Yeah. I feel like that's lariat but I don't have service so, so I can't look it up. <laughs> White blaze again. We just the AT. We might as well just be doing the AT. We've been at the Stony Man Summit viewpoint for the last like 30 minutes or so. And we think it might be the best view in the park. It was absolutely amazing, stunning. And again, we weren't the only ones that knew about it. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of people. Ooh. And you get a lot of rock scrambling if you want to get anywhere near a good photo. Stony Man, Stony Man, Stony Man, Stony Man? Oh my God, I can't see. So this is the point that we were just at with all those people. But really close to it, there's other few points that you can get to where not so many people. These views are insane though behind me, like truthfully. So right here, oh yes, is an acorn top. And if you know how, you can turn this into a whistle. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna teach you how to use this as a whistle just in case you need it when you're in the wilderness and you put your thumbs like this and make a little V and I'm gonna blow right here. Oh my gosh. Pretty cool. <laughs> He's a fraud. Uh, oh. I, I'm gonna count that, that's good. She did it. So we are coming to the end of our 24 hours here in Shenandoah Valley, and it was absolutely beautiful with the fall foliage. We definitely experienced a ton of crowds, but that's to be expected. This time is the most popular time to come to the park and probably the most beautiful. And if you haven't been following along already, go ahead and look at our videos on Acadia in New Hampshire where we saw some amazing fall foliage. And let us know in the comments which place was your favorite. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our other videos. And we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time, time on, on Today's, today's adventure. adventure. Bye. Bye.